God creates the water and we dig wells. The enemy seeks to stop the wells by covering it with dirt. The wells become dry and the dry wells become prisons. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The world we live in is dying out of thirst. The church is the well where rivers of living water flow to bring life to people, breakthrough to finances, peace to families, healing to physical bodies and freedom to souls. Join us as we go digging. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 15, it says the following. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them with, what did they fill them with? What does your translation say? Earth, dirt. Some of you are saying dirt. Your neighbor is saying earth. They're like, what is, trans what is my translation? So earth or dirt. So the story is actually the background of the story is that Isaac goes in into the promised land and the Bible says is there were wells there that used to be operational. They used to have the water in them but the Philistines they went in and they covered these wells with earth or with soil or with dirt and the Isaac later on goes in and starts redigging old wells. I believe one of the things that God is doing with our church is he's redigging old wells. The wells of revival that were happening even in the United States, God is bringing those back. But not only He's redigging old wells, he's, we're going to be also digging some new wells. Because we're not just about to relive the past, we're about to create new future with the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say Amen. Even in the facility that we are in right now, the church that was here before, there was a great move of God that was happening. There are people in the church now who were a part of the church that was here before. There was mighty miracles and deliverances and healings that were taking place. And I believe that God is using the hungry generation to redig the wells that were dug before. Come on somebody. The wells of healing, the wells of revival, the wells of breakthrough, the wells of deliverance, the wells of the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the wells of the mighty move of God, the wells of worship, the wells of evangelism, the wells of prayer, the wells of fasting. God is redigging all the wells. Somebody say yes. Somebody touch your neighbor and say it's time. Touch your other neighbor and say it's to dig the well. To dig the well. But I want us to point, I want to point out the first thing that we read today is the Philistines stopped the wells by filling them with dirt. Philistines stopped the wells by filling them not with junk, not with garbage, not with broken up things, but we filled them with dirt. Before I touch on that, I want to make a mention that a well, what I mean by a well is your spirit. What I mean by a well, I'm talking about your soul. A well is, is, is my spirit, it's my soul. In the Bible, anytime there was a well that had no water, those wells became prisons. If you remember where they threw Joseph in, it was the well that had no water. If you remember, they threw Jeremiah into the well that had no water. I genuinely believe that when a person becomes a believer in Jesus Christ and they no longer host the presence of God, their well that's supposed to be a place of the passion of God becomes a prison of the enemy. Their heart instead of carrying the glory of Jesus it becomes a carrier of chains, troubles and the problems of life and sometimes even demonic influences. See God intended your well to be a carrier of water but if you don't carry water the enemy has a plan for it to turn it into a prison where he imprisons different things. Even Jesus says in Matthew, he says that my house will be a house of, my well will be a place of, of water. And then he says, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Meaning it became a prison. It became a hiding place. It became a den for the demons, for the things that steal our passion, steal our desires. God created your heart to be a fireplace. Don't turn it into a trash can. God created your heart to be a place not only where you live by the memories of yesterday but by the dreams of tomorrow. If your memories are bigger than your dreams you have backslidden. 
you are no longer living by faith you're no longer walking in the Holy Spirit you are living by your history not by your destiny God wants your heart to be a well where there is a living water flowing and if you stop that the enemy has a plan to turn your well into a prison to turn your life into a spiritual emotional mental financial and relational prison but there are people in this room today who are gonna tell devil no not today Satan not with me you might do it with that person and that person and that person I ain't becoming a prison to nobody I already experienced my prison break by the cross of Jesus and I'm not going back to that I only have one life on this earth and I will live it for Jesus I will live burning for Jesus my heart will beat for evangelism my feet will walk after God my mouth will declare his praise my ears will hear his word my eyes will gaze upon the glory of the Lord I ain't becoming a prison I'm a place of passion can somebody say amen and somebody say I'm a place of passion I'm a place of fire. I'm a place of living water. That's why I will fast. That's why I will pray. That's why I will give. Why? I'm not going to become someone's prison. I'm a place of passion. A well without water is a prison. But another thing that I want to point out to you about wells is that in the Bible, wells were places of connection. Most of the men in the Bible found their wives at the wells if you remember Isaac's wife was found at the well not Isaac Isaac didn't do that but his older servant of the father went and found the wife by the well if you remember Moses found his wife at the well Jacob found his wife at the well even Jesus found a woman at the well oh somebody I felt like the Lord has spoken to somebody in this room so what if we stop being gold diggers and become well diggers what if man you stop building an empire and start digging a well i know the instagram says build an empire find a queen and live a happy life that's what instagram says what the word of god says is dig a well and you'll find somebody by that well see if, if many of us will chase women less and chase the lord more some of you men you will have women chase you some of you will man you will find that woman because if you have a well you will have a woman my God I have a feeling that is a single man right there giving a drum <laughs> but there are people in this room today that you don't need a woman maybe you need a contract maybe you, you're looking for a connection maybe you are looking for somebody to open a door for you I want to encourage you in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says seek first the well of God and everything else you will find right at that well see and Jesus says before that verse he said the heathen seek after these things but you do it differently he says I create connections at the well I create business connections at the well I create contracts at the well I open doors at the well so if you find yourself a right well that has a living water God says don't be surprised not only you'll find water there you will find some people there they will forever alter your destiny don't be chasing promotion chase his presence promotion will chase you you are a sheep that follows the shepherd and the bible says goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life that means there's some good things some things you don't deserve will follow you see the world follows those things we as believers we find a well and things follow us and these signs will follow those who believe and the signs are not accidents and breakdowns and the back gives out those are not the signs if you find a well you have signs goodness and mercy will follow you so if you are here today and you're desperate for a relationship if you are here today and you are an impatient for a spouse if you are here today and you are desperate for somebody to give you the job that you went to university for I want to ask you what if you switch the desperation for God's presence like that and you open your life you'll be surprised how many connections you will find at the right well can somebody say amen what the enemy does is that he knows that we can find connections he knows we can find a real genuine relationship by cultivating a life full of the Holy Spirit so what he does I want you to watch this and Philistines fill the well with dirt now dirt in the farm is soil dirt in the well is dirt 
if you take soil in the in the backyard for the flowers it has nutrients it's beautiful it's not dirty it belongs there it fuels the plants the flowers take the same soil out of the farm and put it on your dresser put it on your coffee table and that soil is no longer soil it's dirt the same thing applies to sex put it into marriage it's soil take it outside of marriage it's dirty that's why we feel guilty the same thing applies to cares of life and busyness of life it has its place but the moment the enemy takes the life and fills your well with life it's no longer soil it's a burden it becomes a stress trigger it becomes something that gives you sleepless nights it becomes something that then you need to go and and find a numbing mechanism or a medicating mechanism to deal with and that's why Jesus says is that what the enemy will do is he will take the deceitfulness of riches the cares of this life and he will try to plug the well not with drugs and alcohol and pornography and gambling not with that but with soil of life the enemy plugs the wells of water to some of you here today the reason why you are not burning for the Lord is you're burned out by life you just you're just tired you're just exhausted life was so simple when you had nothing going you hated it you were envious of everybody who had something going until your life started going and the mortgage came in and the phone payment came in and the internet payment came in and Netflix raised their price and then the tires need to be changed and then the college tuition is due and then the drama at work and then the drama with your girlfriend you prayed for the girlfriend now you're not sure if you want one and now all of this stuff begins to pile up and the enemy has a trick behind his sleeve is he will put the soil that's supposed to be in our backyard and he will plug the well and of course we excuse it and say you don't understand Vlad I have to think about these things I have to live anxious I have to live worried I have to be busy I can't afford to pray I can't afford to fast I can't afford to read the word I can't afford to be focused on God I gotta focus on my life just remember the soil that's plugging the well is quenching the water if you would let your well be unplugged it will water the soil the very thing the enemy uses as a distraction from our passion for God is for one reason so he can keep the soil from being watered so that our soil doesn't produce fruit it only produces busyness why because we've let that the earth the job the responsibilities for some of us we're not plugged with soil we're plugged with junk we're plugged with liquor we're plugged with smoking we're plugged with extramarital affair we're plugged with pornography we're plugged with things that we delete the browser history we're plugged with things we do after 11 o'clock sneak out of the house we're plugged with shady stuff we're plugged with sending news on snapchat we're plugged with that kind of stuff because the enemy said you ain't got life so he plugs you with sin but today you are not here so we can condemn you you are here so we can unplug you the Holy Spirit wants to unplug your well if it's dirt he wants to unplug that and put the dirt back into the farm so that your water waters your dirt the Holy Ghost can water your business the Holy Ghost can water your family the Holy Spirit can water your career the Holy Spirit can water your ministry he can water your children he can water your health he can water the very thing you are worried about he has the capacity to water and that is why you have to live an unplugged life so that you can live a watered life so you can live with the favor of God with the grace of God and with the anointing of God somebody needs to unplug themselves today somebody needs to disconnect themselves today somebody needs to shake things up today somebody needs to tell the devil the time has expired smoking has expired alcoholism has expired adultery has expired pornography has expired why? Because I gotta be unplugged. I gotta let the river flow. I gotta let the life flow. I gotta let the spirit flow. Somebody give God some praise right now. If you feel like this is for you, raise your hands right now. Begin to unplug yourself. 
Come on, raise your hands right there just for the next 30 seconds. Begin to unplug yourself right now. If there is something else that preoccupies your mind, if there is something else that has occupied your spirit, if there is something else that could not let your mind be turned off, right now is the moment to release the prayer, to release the war cry, to release the desire to God and say, God, help me. God, deliver me. God, set me free. I don't want to be plugged up. I want to be free. I want to be free. Philistines used dirt to plug the wells. The enemy will use life to plug your soul. Some of us, he will use sin to plug our soul. But I want to encourage you today with point number two. The scripture says in Genesis 26 and verse 18 the following. So when the enemy plugged the well, with earth. Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. Isaac dug up the wells again. I believe if you have backslidden, if you remember days that you loved God more than you love him today, if you remember days where you pursued Jesus more than you have pursued him today. If you remember time where you were committed to giving more than you are committed today. If you remember time that the sensitivity to the presence of God was so real and it's more than today and you have backslidden. My friend, you backslider. I don't care if you're not smoking, drinking or getting laid. You are backslidden. But the good news is you have a shovel. And we can go digging today. God's gonna dig, dig, dig the dirt out. God's gonna restore you today. God's gonna release his word right now and he's gonna start bringing conviction back and restore you. And tomorrow morning I'm gonna see you at prayer. And then Tuesday night we're gonna see you back at life group. And it's not because you're worse than even these wells needed to be re, re dug again. It's completely fine if you find yourself right now in that place where you lost it. But don't stay like there don't stay like there. The Bible says they dug the wells again. How do you dig a well? I'm so glad you asked. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 5 it says this, for I have this one thing against you says the Lord, is that you have lost your water. You lost your water God says. You still have a form of a well. It's just it's no longer watering your land. In fact your land has filled up, plugged your well. And God says, I have a problem. I didn't design you, put my spirit inside of you for you to be a prison. I designed you not just so you can be busy running on the treadmill, sweating like crazy and getting nowhere. I didn't design you. I have no room to move in your life because you plugged my spirit up. And God says, you still have the water underneath and you're rejoicing. Well, I have salvation. I have the Holy Spirit. But God says, see, I didn't give you the Spirit so you will just hide Him. I gave Him so you can release Him. And He's not being released into your business. He's not being released into your relationship because He's so plugged over there with the soil, with the compromise and with the sin. You are limiting my Spirit by only keeping Him to yourself and He's not being released into your life. And God says, today I want, I want to unplug you. And how do you unplug yourself? Four R's. R number one, remember the good old days. That's what God says, remember from where you've fallen. Meaning remember how things used to be. Remember when God was your everything. Remember when you had nothing. Remember the day when you were young. Maybe you were a teenager and you grew up in a broken family and you just encountered God and nothing else mattered except Jesus. God says, remember that day. You thought your life was horrible because you had nothing for me but you had me and I rejoiced in the fact that I was all you had. Remember that day. Number two, God says not only I want you to remember, God says I want you to go start digging. Repent. Meaning how do you get back to those days? It's very simple. In the day that you met Jesus, you turned your face toward God and automatically your back was turned toward everything else. You didn't ignore your family, you didn't ignore your business, you didn't ignore your finances, your friends, you didn't ignore them. They just went behind you, not in front of you no more. 
they had your back and the weird part about it is that God seemed to bless what was behind you more than when you turn your face toward it and God says repent means this turn your face back to my face and your back toward everything else you mean turn my back on school mm-hmm turn your back on your family you already did a long time ago no, 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 no. Jesus says not to turn your back and that you're ignoring them. You're forsaking your responsibilities. It's that your face is toward the face of Jesus. Your back is toward the ministry. Your face is toward the glory of Jesus. Your back is toward your financial goals. And God says, whatever you turn your back to, I will water. I will water that that you turn your back to but if you turn your face toward your business you turn your face toward relationship if you don't realize it my friend you actually turn your back toward my face Moses have asked Lord I want to see your face I felt this week the Lord say to me Vlad I want to see your face because it's buried in everything else except my face it's buried in good things called ministry. It's buried in good things like writing a book, the next travel gig, the next thing, the healing testimonies, all of this stuff. He said, your face is glued to everything. But he said, remember the day where you had nothing to look at except my face. Your back was toward everything else and it seems like blessings started to find you when you were not looking for them. And now your face turned toward those blessings and you might not have realized, but you actually turned your back toward my face. The Lord says to some of you here today, I want to see your face. I see your body here, but I want to see your face. You gave your face to everything else. And my friend, remember, whatever you give your face to, you don't have the power to water it. God can water what you turn your back to in your attempt to give your face to the Lord. Repentance means I turn my face back to the Lord, which means my back. We'll go to everything else and again I don't mean that you come to your parents and say mom I'm giving you my back I'm done with you guys I'm not saying you come to your spouse and say hey just want to let you know you're no longer important to me I hate you because Jesus says if I love him I have to hate you so I hate you always been hating him by the way no 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 that is not what the Lord says the Lord says that we turn our face toward him and we put everything else a second and most of those things in our life I find it will do much better being second than being first you know what the Lord says after that he says remember repent and then he says repeat do the same works you did before some of you say man I lost my passion but if you remember you used to fast do the first things you did before but if you remember you didn't come to church 10 minutes late you used to come 10 minutes early do the first things you did before if you remember the first time when you got paid you right away took 10 percent and you treat it as sacred before God it was your trust in God it didn't do it because you had to you felt this sacred thing of honoring God today you tip not tithe do the first works if you remember you looked at something and you felt guilty and now you don't God says do the first things you did before repeat it's a very simple formula if you repeat what you did before the Lord says the fire will come back the flame will come back the water will flow again my favor will flow again can somebody say amen I remember I repent I repeat and then there's going to be a reward what is going to be the reward Jesus says whoever he who overcomes he said these things will happen I genuinely believe the favor begins to follow when his face is sought I am not saying you're gonna get rich but you will be blessed and it will add no sorrow with it the favor will follow favor is this it's when you get things you don't work for you don't deserve and your education don't qualify you for favor it's when you get things that seems to be a little bit unfair favor is when God begins to get involved and God begins to water the world other people are trying to cultivate with you you have a partner on your side you gave him your face he actually makes you a better husband when you focus on being a better follower he makes you a better father when you focus on being a better disciple of Jesus he actually makes you a better preacher when you don't focus on preaching but you focus on praying when you give him your face he waters what you turn your back on his favor begins to follow somebody say favor touch your neighbor and it's ain't fair 
favor. The scripture says is that's exactly what started to happen is the water came out the wells were watered and I'm going to bring this message to an end and if we can read one more verse and this verse will be verse 22 and he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it and he called his name by the good name that I will not pronounce because he said for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land I want you to see this is that Isaac goes in and he, he digs a well that his father used to have. He redigs that well and then you know God begins to water. He, they begin to drink. The livestock begins to drink. The farmland is... The father and the mother who are always getting on your case to get your grades up. The moment you start going to church and now they're against you. Why are you betrayed your religion and you went to that church? You turn your back on Catholicism. You're like mom we were never Catholics. We only professed Catholicism. We never possessed that faith. We all live like heathens. And now that I'm actually possessing my faith, everybody's against me. Your friends who liked you when you were like them will hate you the moment you will not be like them. Because some people's security is based on you not getting ahead some people's confidence is based on you failing and the moment you start succeeding their insecurity surfaces and they will reject you pharisees hated jesus not because he did miracles but because he made them insecure even Pilate saw that betraying jesus was because of envy jesus stood up Jesus had crowds. Jesus' words were obeyed by the wind and the demons and people followed that and Pharisees were jealous of that and they were fighting him and the only way to stop people fighting you is to stop growing which is a high price to pay to satisfy unsatisfiable critics. What do you do when in your pursuit of the well you create a controversy? What do you do if Philistines stop filling your well? But now they filled your life with drama. Now the house that everybody liked you because you were drinking and you were doing all of this stuff and now they oppose you and they call you better than others. You think you're better than us. You're like mom and dad I'm not trying to be better than you. I'm just trying to be better than me. Is that a crime? They will think it is. It's like a football game. Nobody's tackling you until you get the ball and the only way they'll stop tackling is if you lose the ball. I'll rather have the ball and have the world attack and have the other team on my side, the team Jesus, the team the angels of God, the team of the Spirit of God and score a touchdown with my life that tried to reduce my life to prove my ex wrong prove my parents wrong, prove the people who hate me wrong, prove my abusers wrong. I'm not living to prove anything to no one. I'm living to please only one person whose name is Jesus Christ. I'm living my life to finish the race, score a touchdown and make sure he is pleased. Can somebody say amen? In the conclusion, I want you to be standing for a second. I want you to, if you're taking notes, write this down. When you are rejected by those close to you, when you are rejected by unreasonable people, don't build walls of offense. Build wells of water. You're not Trump. Leave the walls alone. I want you to see that Isaac did not build a wall between him and Abimelech. When he got rejected, he realized, I'm going to go dig me a well. Never build a wall between people who rejected you. Why? Because if you dig a well, they'll get thirsty and they'll need your water to drink one day. The Bible says Abimelech came back and apologized. Some people that have rejected you, don't burn the bridge because they'll need a way to come back. The Bible says they will weep 
looking at him whom they wounded it speaks of Jesus that's why when Jesus was being rejected on the cross he didn't build a wall he says forgive them father for they not know what they do he was building a well of salvation that even the Pharisees even the Sadducees even the haters will be able to come back and weep looking at him whom they wounded some of your people who rejected you will come back 10, 15, 20 years down the road and they will say please forgive me for what I did. I did it because I was insecure. I did it because my whole life was falling apart. I did it because I was demonized. I did it. Please forgive me. Can I drink from your well? I am running thirsty. Isaac dug a well. He didn't build a wall. But number two I want you to see is when herdsmen picked up a fight. Not Abimelech. And they contended for this well and they said this is our well we build it Isaac says no you didn't I build this watch this Isaac doesn't take them to court he gives them the well and go dig, goes and digs another one and these people go to the next time and says no that's our well too and Isaac doesn't hire a hitman Isaac gives them their well too most of the family arguments could be settled if we do three things lay down our rights pick up our responsibilities and safeguard the interests of someone else the covenant says this i lay down my right i protect your safe your, your interests and i pick up my responsibility but a world of contract if you have a contract with at&t Verizon, if you have a contract with your mortgage company, this is what three things that every contract does. It protects your rights. It safeguards your interests and it limits your responsibilities. And Isaac said this, I'm not coming into this well thing with the contract mentality. I'm a covenant man. I'm a man of a covenant. That means that I will protect not my rights. I will lay my rights down. You want to have that well? I know it's mine. You can have it. But that's not fair. People of fair favor don't fight for fairness. If you're walking in favor, fighting for fairness is below you. The only people who fight for fairness who've never tasted God's favor. The only guy who will choke somebody who owes him a thousand is somebody who had an amnesia and forgot you've been forgiven of trillions. That's why Jesus looked at people who were stoning the woman and he says, you're having amnesia. Did you forget how much I forgave you? Pick up a mirror and drop a stone. It's okay that you've been treated unfairly. You've also been treated with favor by Almighty God. My friend, lay down your rights. If your wife says she is right, it's because she is. If your husband says he is right, did you forget who you married? His first name is right, his last name is always. <laughs> that means you lay down your rights. You pick up your responsibility, meaning your dirty clothes from the floor. You pick up that vacuumer. You pick up those dirty dishes and you safeguard that person's interest. And guess what you do? You build another well. You drop this, you build another well and you become a peacemaker. You become a covenant person and something happens. I want to read a word to every person who will live like a covenant. This is what God says. And from now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. All the quarreling that you do in the house, you do in your company, all the drama that follows you, you're just a little person who has an amnesia of how much good God has been to you. Don't fight with the herdsmen of your land let it go move on but they did this they owe me excuse me you owe to burn in hell if everybody's gonna owe each other we all gonna be buried six feet under nobody owes you anything the bible says the only thing you and i owe is to love people we owe to love people i know i'm speaking to people who've been wounded I'm speaking to people who've been hurt. I'm speaking to people who've been rejected. I'm speaking to people in this room you've been taken advantage of. And some of you look at your life and you say, I'm gonna prove them right. They don't even see you. They don't even care. Holding on and building on forgiveness is setting yourself on fire, hoping they will burn from it. 
drinking rat poison hoping a rat will die from it it's only destroying you be like Isaac he built a well they fought over it he says you know what it's my well but you can have it I'm a covenant man I lay down my rights I pick up my responsibilities and I will safeguard your interests I know you don't like me I know you got issues I know you need inner healing and deliverance and you need a therapy but you know what that is your problem I will not let your problem make me my problem builds another well and they come and they fight him over it and instead of fighting them and winning them he could have won but see you have to understand you can always win a fight with the skunk you just have to ask yourself a question is the smell worth the fight don't look at your spouse right now this is not a good moment to squeeze their hand because y'all gonna be sleeping on the couch you can always win the fight with a skunk. You just have to ask yourself a question. Is it worth the smell? And that's why Isaac said, I'm not gonna fight you, why? I'm digging wells, not proving a point. I don't have, I only have one life and I'm not gonna waste it proving something wrong. I'm gonna live my life fulfilling God's call, pleasing Him and digging wells. I'm gonna burn for Jesus. You hate me, you can do. One of the reasons why people will hate you is because their own well is dry as well. Burn for the Lord. Build a well. Let Him consume you. Let His presence be your passion. Precious Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence in this room. Precious Jesus, I thank you that nothing is impossible to you. I ask you right now for every single person whose well been plugged. Cares of life, deceitfulness of riches, chasing the next big thing who have abandoned their devotions who have abandoned their discipleship who have abandoned their christian disciplines who have abandoned prayer have abandoned fasting abandoned giving who have abandoned even getting together in church going to a life group who have abandoned loving their family who have abandoned being there for their children who have abandoned the, the moral the morality even of at their work and they became shady cunning and and cutting corners and they don't even feel numb about it no more they just they just they've been desensitized god i just ask you for that person today that you will unplug them right now through repentance I ask you for those who are burning but they are so tired of the drama in their life and they're just busy right now trying to prove everybody wrong they're busy trying to prove their ex wrong they're busy trying to prove a teacher and a coach a parent or a pastor or somebody wrong that they could make it because of somebody who didn't believe in them I ask you dear Holy Spirit right now that you will quicken and baptize them in a covenant and deliver them from a contract mentality Jesus. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.